the Natomas Garden and Arts Club is doing, um, is supporting Chalk It Up around the town and also the Sacramento Tree Foundation. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the, sac the Chalk It Up to Sacramento uh, is a sidewalk chalk painting festival that takes place annually over Labor Day weekend. Uh, for the past decade or so, it's taken place at Fremont Park, which is between 15th and 16th and P and Q in Midtown. This year, due to COVID, um, there will be a few artists working at Fremont Park, but most of the artists will be chalking it up around the town. So chalk it up around the town is the theme for this year's Chalk It Up Festival. And um, this information is available at the Chalk It Up website. Um, we will have the uh, contact information for chalkitup.org uh, at the end of the presentation put into the chat box during the, uh, during the course of the presentation. Um, and we're also working to promote the, the Sacramento, excuse me, the Sacramento Tree Foundation and specifically the Tree Foundation's Neighborwoods um, Urban Greening Project. Okay, so without further ado, let me present to you this slide is from Chalk It Up 2017. And Angela and I did this from um, uh, a photo she took from her her trip to China um, that earlier that summer. Um, I chose it because I love the, um, let me get me a pointer here, the, the leaves here, the details on the leaves and the, the details on the bark up here and the, the shadows of the ribbons and the, the, the tree bark here that, that creates kind of a circle and leads the eye around the composition. Um, so that's why I, so I'm going to share with you not only some of my favorite artwork, but some chalk art techniques and a specific challenge for my neighbors um, and the members of the NGAC. Um, so let's move on to this composition. This was done by Teresa Lehane, our marketing and media director. Um, this one here, I love the, the, the landscape um, presentation, the wider angle. I love the, um, the hill that the tree is on with the light, the um, lighting accented here. I love the way that the roots hug the top of the tree. I love the way that the, um, the background gradates in color and then leads your eye up to this, is, which is not in this case a sponsor name, but in this case, it's the name of the Valley Oak. I love Valley Oaks. I love the trees um, asymmetry. I love the shading and the shadow of the trunk and the branches. Um, the, 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 the leaves in the trees, you'll notice, are not one color. The branches, the trunk are not one color. The foreground is not one color. Um, I, I just love this composition here. And I do want to call your attention to the fact that these rocks here in the foreground are not painted in. They're actually holes in the pavement that she, she painted on. So kudos to you, uh, Teresa. So, alrighty. So first things first, let's talk about gathering your tools. Uh, what tools will you need? So here I have, this is like the selection, the 24 pack of the chalk pastels that you'll get. This right here is a collection of maybe a decade or so of chalk artwork. Um, you can get chalk pastels like this, pastel chalks. They're not the same as chalkboard chalks. They're not actually even the same as like the bucket sidewalk chalks. The, the hues are richer, the, the, the texture is creamier, um, and they adhere to the pavement, um, in my opinion, a lot better. Um, and you can get these like a 24 pack like this, you could get it at Michael's for about $20. Um, University Art um, in Midtown on J Street has always been very supportive of Chalk It Up of all art activities um, uh, in the community. They sell their pack for $16.99. Uh, I encourage you to go down there and get them, get, get to chalks from them. 
Uh, you can also use, uh, I have here my, my brushes and the rags and the, my squirt bottles. Um, and these tools here are specifically used to adhere the chalk to the pavement. Okay, so um, uh, here is kind of a demo of cutting the fingers off of the gloves because gloves can be a bit cumbersome to wear uh, uh, as an artist. It's hard to create when I've got mitts on. So I use these as like finger cots to, to rub the sidewalk. I, I'm going to warn people over and over again, do not rub the chalk into the sidewalk with your bare finger, okay? Um, we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Let me just indicate to you here, I've got a ruler. Um, this is because if you're doing a sponsored piece, the, the sponsor's name is very important and should be put into your composition in lettering that is a minimum of six inches tall. And you wanna be able to gauge that. If you forget a ruler, um, it's my uh, experience that one of these flat brushes here, which is one of my favorite brushes to use, is about six inches long. So uh, you can just use that in a pinch. All right, so aside from your chalks, um, you're definitely going to need um, the gardening pads. This is to, to kneel on while you're leaning over the sidewalk um, doing your artwork. I would also suggest uh, a nice stretch in the morning, maybe some yoga. It's not joking. This is hard work. So you're going to want to have shade, um, drinking water to stay hydrated, a chair or a blanket so that you can kick back and take breaks. Um, it's, it's a lot of work and um, you're, you're not, you will have to take it slow. You get three days to do your work, um, but you will have to take it slow. All right. So you also going to need um, the chalk bucket of water, you, um, this is for wetting your brush to help um, adhere the chalk and the spray bottle to wet your surface before you put the chalk on down. And then, like I said before, your brushes and your rags, do not use your bare finger. You will take every chalk artist, every seasoned chalk artist has had the experience where they remove their fingerprints and replace them with blisters or road rash. Uh, you don't feel it while you're doing it. You feel it the next day. So don't do it. Just take my advice and just don't do it. Okay, so uh, moving right along here. So you've got your tools collected. Now let's talk about creating your composition. So um, my technique for creating um, a, a composition um, either in a landscape, um, which is bottom of the tree to the top of the tree, maybe multiple trees, foreground, background, um, or a still life slash portrait um, uh, format where you're focusing in more on one specific tree or even a detail of one specific tree. Um, either one is uh, a a good choice. Um, this, uh, this picture here, <clears throat> I actually pulled this off the SMUD website. It shows a, a good landscape format. You've got trees in front of trees. You've got trees of different heights. Um, the, the picture here or the, the graphic that's here um, is from the Sacramento Tree Foundation website. Um, their shady, list of shady 80 for the, the trees that they would like you to plant in your neighborhood. Um, I added this observation that many tree shapes have a Y at the base. You'll notice that. Um, I do want to emphasize though that trees don't have to be symmetrical. Nature is not symmetrical and your composition at the end of the day will be, will be more interesting if it is balanced, but not necessarily symmetrical. Um, all right, so moving right along. Here are some interesting tree shapes um, that um, you want to make sure I, where I am on my, okay. So you want to look for interesting tree shapes. And I pulled these ones from some pictures that I took on our recent trip um, and also 
just off of the internet. But I love these trees because of the branches. I love trees in general. Ask my family. I love the trunk on this guy, how it twists and bends. This is an olive tree. Um, this one here is a cypress, and I love the roots, and I love the, the angle of the branches and how they come forward. I love these um, oaks over here, um, the way that the branches create a negative space and the leaves and the shadows. Um, I like the fences on these landscapes that add interest to the composition. So you're definitely wanting to look for interesting tree shapes um, to help you create <clears throat> an interesting composition, okay? So um, you're also going to want to look for other interesting eye-catching elements, bark, leaves, flowers, fruit. Um, I look for textures. I look for um, different shadows and shading. Um, I look, these are all from pictures that I've taken around Natomas. Um, this one here is from Land Park. These ones here are from Land Park. But, um, and my trip to the, to the uh, Lotus Blossom Garden. But you like, I like to look for um, shading, shadowing, um, different textures, different movements that create a dramatic effect for the composition. And um, you can find pictures to create your composition either in your own photos um, or look online. The Sacramento Tree Foundation, like I said before, has um, a lot of good uh, images that, to choose from. And when you make your composition up, oftentimes I cobble together more than one photograph. So I have here, this is my Western Redbud composition. And I, when I drew this one up, um, I wanted to present it more as a brochure or a flyer, as one of the trees that um, is being presented by SMUD, by the Neighborhoods Urban Tree Foundation. It's a pollinator um, and it grows um, indigenously in our area. This one right here, I love this one because of the, the, the angle, um, the, the, how it retreats into the background. And I wanted to challenge myself to try to recreate that. And um, the Diodora, I love the Diodora um, from top to bottom. I put it in the landscape format because it reminds me of the, the um, uh, Dr. Seuss, the Grinch that stole Christmas. So um, working from these photographs, I came up with my, um, um, I put together my final composition. I use these inset photos here to present this image more as a, like I said, a flyer or a brochure informational um, drawing. Um, I, I, I really enjoyed playing with the branches on this tree here and also with the light um, behind the, the branches on the Diodora. Um, very fun. You get into it. It's really fun. So let's go through the steps in creating your um, sidewalk talk artwork. Number one, choose your composition. Okay. Um, do your rough sketch and put in your sponsor's name. I do want to say that on the Chalk It Up website, they said you could chalk rough sketch in your sponsor's name. Like I did it up live right here. But it is one of the most important things on a sponsored artwork. Um, on your rough sketch, I do also want to mention that um, you want to use one of the lighter colors that is going to exist in your the, the full palette of your composition. Um, um, and, excuse me, I do want to emphasize, don't use white. Um, your 24 pack is going to come with one white and one black. And um, you'll need them for adding highlight and dimension. Um, and you don't want to use it for something that's essentially going to be covered up. I would use a gray. Uh, for a tree, I used a, a light brown. Um, in this particular composition, I, I wanted to experiment with this technique where I took a plastic sheet cover and I adhered it to the sidewalk with duct tape to isolate these areas from the surrounding composition so that I could do um, inset details of the leaves and, and the, the flowers. So one, 
uh, choose your composition. Two, rough sketch your design. Number three, block in your background. Um, number four, color in your branches, your foliage, your flowers. And then finally, fill in your finishing touches and the final details. Um, and you can see the progression of it as uh, I filled in behind. Let, let me show you one more example to go through this. Number one, choose your composition. Number two, rough sketch it in. Three, four, fill in the background, rough in the foreground, the tree. And then number five, finish in the details of the bark and the leaves. All right, hint, hint. I'm sorry, let me just pause for a second here. Uh, let me just, hold on. Uh, I'm sorry. Let me just mute you guys all again. I don't know how you keep getting noisy. Someone is still not muted. I don't know who I hear. It's Let me try caller. to mute you again. It's a call in. All right. You should be muted. I am still hearing someone, but let's just continue with the presentation. All right. So choose your composition. Rough sketch in your design. Fill in your background in the rough in the tree and then finish the bark in the details. All right. Let's do this very quickly. Um, why isn't it moving? All right, here we go. All right, so here's a quick demonstration here for you. Um, all right, this composition here I chose um, for a few different reasons. I wanted to, number one, have a composition that I could do um, in about 35 minutes so that I could do it as a demo. I wanted to have one that showed branches that crossed and overlapped. I wanted to have the apple here so that I could show, demonstrate some techniques for uh, shading and contouring. Okay, so here is my original sketch here at the bottom. Um, let me get my pointer and move this thing away. You can see it's a pretty flat sketch. Um, no real details, um, just the basic outline compared to the finished product. Um, and this is the process, let me give you a big screen here, of bringing it, uh, let me pause it uh, here and there. I want to um, bring your attention to, this is my spray bottle. I squirt the chalk on the squirt the water onto the pavement, brush on the chalk, um, and then um, dip a wet brush onto that, and then move the chalk pigment around with the brush. Let me pause it again here. Um, putting on the chalk dry. That's kind of a a blurry picture. Let's see. So I put the the chalk down onto the wet pavement, dip the brush into the water and then um, move the pigment around with the wet brush. I do want to indicate here, I want to show you um, this lighter streak that I'm putting down the center of the branch. And you can also see how I'm starting to use the coloring to bring the center of the, the branch forward, drop the back sides, the edges, back away from you with a darker color to add more depth and dimension to the composition. So moving right along here. Okay, so let me stop it again here. Uh, okay, here, that's a better picture there. So you can see how I've started to add the dark on the sides, dropping the, the, the edges of the branches backwards. I have lines here and here to um, that are establishing the contours of the branches, these little, um, brush strokes here that are indicating the directionality of the of the wood okay let's see um here this is a better a better demonstration of contouring here right here this black line right here really drops this to the background here 
right here, I'm, I'm achieving the, trying to achieve the same thing right here. And these lines here help to break the front of the image away from the back of the image. And here showing the crease in the, in the tree's trunk. So, um, and as I go along uh, blocking in the leaves, I want, oh, stopping it here. I want to uh, call your attention to the apple. Um, the apple is a round circle right now, and I want to make it appear as a sphere. So um, I actually have two colors of yellow and two colors of red that I'm going to blend in to make one orange apple with highlights that hopefully will look spherical. So you can see as I do that, I want to, um, let's see, show you. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Uh, dun, dun. All right. Right here, as I put in the stem, you can see that the stem is not on the top of the apple, but it's kind of more towards the center or, or to the front of the apple. That gives depth to the apple, creates a, um, a, 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 a rounder shape for my apple here. Um, and painting and painting. Okay, now let's stop it again here. I think you can see in this picture here how I'm actually using the brush strokes at this point. The chalk art is kind of like, I don't know if you've ever used watercolor pencils, but it is a mixture of drawing and painting. Um, but here I'm actually using the brush strokes to show the directionality of the branches. Like this branch goes this way uh, and this branch goes this way. So the bark is going to be moving in a different direction or, or facing in a different direction. And I'm indicating that with the different colors that I'm placing on. You see, putting the colors here, putting the colors on there. Um, and finally, I'm putting in a little bit of the shadow and the shading. Oh, let me stop it here again. Oh, stopped it a little too late. I always do this. I stop it too late, but let me move it up to here so I can show you at the very end, um, right here. Okay, so what I've done here on the leaf and I, I with the dark lines, and this is, I don't know, this is just my technique for doing this, but. I call these contour lines. I believe that's actually what they really are called, but um, I use them to, to show that the leaf is folding over itself. This one right here, I didn't quite get to finish it the way I wanted it to, but I wanted to show the leaf bending over on itself. And I'm doing that using this, the darker outline to, to, uh, to, to show that. Okay. So that's the chalk art presentation and um, I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. Let's see if I can get to the next slide. This last picture here as we finish up, wrap up, this is from 2018. It's um, a picture that Angela and I did. This is cobbled together from about 20 different photographs. Um, this was one photograph that I got off the internet. This is a tree out of our backyard. This one Angela painted. She says it looks like me. These flat roses are roses from um, the, the rose garden in, um, at the community center. Um, and we're coming to the end of the presentation. I do, uh, if you have any questions, you can contact the Natomas Garden Arts Club at gmail.com. Um, or go to our, our webpage.